Let's jump over to our man Teddy Kegstat. We talk to Teddy folks every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every trading day at his website, forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstat, what's happening, man? Good morning, Tommy. Good morning. Uh, so we have a few moves going on in the Forex market, Teddy. We have crude holding at some pretty lofty levels right now, coming off the Memorial Day weekend. We got some OPEC news potentially. Where do you want to kick things off this morning? Uh, well, why don't we talk about the crude and interest rate markets since they're definitely helping to drive what's going on in the currencies right now. We have a little flip in the dollar about to happen. So um, obviously Perfect. crude is trending higher, higher move highs and higher move lows, especially on the daily and the hourly. Um, I think we're going to continue to batter resistance. I think we're going to keep on probing those highs. I think we're going to definitely start to... Uh, you know, the momentum is going to build. It's just going to keep on building. I see us at 120 to 125 in the not too distant future, without a doubt. So, yeah, I got the chart up on a daily. I mean, we just got above those recent highs, right? The only thing on that chart really is that initial spike to 130. Um, mm -hmm. What did we hit yesterday? Pretty close. Did we get to 120? 119.98. We got to 119. Yeah. yeah, the way the way we came out of the gate through the holiday with oil right now, the bulls are in place. You know that part of the that is definitely I think. I mean, higher move highs and higher move lows. What do you what else can you say? You know, until yep. we have some type of divergence at least from that to see some sort of neutral trade set up, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, then we also have the, the the Treasury bond market and the ten year market where <clears throat> they had a very very big sell off. Now the interesting thing is that. The dollar has been basically in a, in a downside correction for the past couple of weeks. So the euro has been a little bit stronger than it had been, but not that much. The pound's been holding up, but a lot of other currencies have gained a little bit of ground. So they're all in a corrective phase. I think we're as this week into next week, we're coming into the end of that. So there still could be a dollar spike to the lows. Um, but right now, I think you're starting to find a bottom as far as with the dollar index, meaning that the euro is running out of gas. And that's the one especially it's one of the strongest currencies out there you know it's the biggest in the dollar index it's having trouble with resistance you know like you can't sustain a rally you know it had a nice corrective move over the past couple of weeks but the momentum is waning and i think that we're starting to see that dollar strength is going to come back in a very very big way especially as we head into uh you know the, the middle of june and into july yeah that euro us dollar man i had it on a daily i put it on a weekly I mean, just basically a straight drop since February 7th from 115 almost to 103.49, mm -hmm. so 103.5. Um, yeah, that's a bounce, but I hear you. I mean, if you if I put a trend line on that chart, you know, you're barely out of the downtrend. That's pretty steep mm -hmm. on the euro-US dollar. And the major trends are coinciding right now very well, where you have the dollar index correcting, you have the treasury bond market that's been correcting to the upside, you know, and, and, it's, it's, and even with oil. So now as we have... The Treasury bond market is starting to spike out and run out of gas to the upside, and it looks like the bears are coming back. You know, that's the same thing that's going on with the dollar. Those bulls, the dollar bulls are coming back. The interest rate bears are coming back. And as though, if those two start to come together, you know, you're going to see bat, definitely the euro is starting to collapse again. And the, and the U.S. dollar, Swiss franc, I think that's one to really watch out for because – it came up, it went above parity and had a very big correction of, for, especially concerning if you look at most of the currencies, the yen and the and the and the uh, Swiss have corrected the most. Okay, and now I think yeah. that they're going to go when they go back to the upside, they're going to make new highs. We're going to see the U.S. dollar Swiss above parity again. So that's a pretty good intermediate term trade. I mean, this is not going to happen over the next couple of sessions, but I guarantee you, especially the Swiss. It's not going to just trend and grind higher like a you know a quarter point over a day over the course of weeks when it's going to start to move. And then you're going to have a couple of days where you're going to probably see like two basis handles without a doubt, you know, as it starts to get yeah. towards parity. That is quite a chart, man, from April 4th, 92 cents to just above parity and then back to 96 in a heartbeat. That's some volatility, mm -hmm. man. Right. There's a nice swing um, trade there. You talked about the interest rate. Pretty remarkable. I had the chart of the 10-year even up here. You're sitting almost back a couple months to, to where we were as you chopped around a bit. I was talking mm -hmm. about at the beginning of my program that the Fed's going to be rolling off the balance sheet starting in June, um, that the numbers they're using. It's pretty interesting. I was talking to my man Kevin Hinks saying that you know they're going to be rolling off, I think it's $47.5 billion total. That's going to be $30 billion in Treasury securities and 17.5 in mortgage-backed. But they can't 
they're, they're, they have maturities expiring, Teddy, that are over the 30 billion. So they're still gonna be reinvesting like $18 billion this month of treasury mm -hmm. securities. Do you see that baked in? I asked Kevin a similar question, you know, because it's an important one, right? As in, we're coming down the line here. Do you see that baked in, or do you see rates potentially raising higher, rising higher, as we come into a Fed hiking hiking cycle? And we got another meeting in two weeks from today. I think they announce. Uh, yeah, actually, I do. I think like right now, if the bonds um, actually do get a rally, it's going to be one last head, head fake. I think that as we move into June and going into July, you're going to see the bonds trend a lot lower. And remember, these expirations that you're talking about also coincide with futures expiration. So you're going to have futures, options and cash deliverables expiring all at the same time. That's going to cause a lot of crazy volatility. And I, I would say probably from around June 10th to about June 25th, you know, like that that window of, of 14, 15 days, I think you're going to see a lot of erratic moves in the Treasury bond market. It's going to be really hard to gauge direction during that time because you're going to have an unloading of all these things. You know yeah. what I mean? So, I mean, and I know that's a dynamic a lot of people don't understand. We don't need to get in the mechanics of it. But that time frame of, of those expirations, especially combined with the cash, I think is really going to be a tough trade. So the trends are intact. You know, keep, stick to your guns on that. But be very careful if you're an intraday trader during that window. Yeah, I found it amusing. I saw one article was talking about, I think maybe the minutes of the recent Fed meeting and saying that a couple of the <laughs> Fed governors were uncertain of how that type of a roll off would go. And I say, if, if anybody says you're certain, man, you're crazy. How could you be certain you're rolling <laughs> yeah. off something? You know, I mean, of course we right. should be uncertain. Anybody that tells you they know how it's going to go, you at least got to be prepared for for um, some unforeseen situations mm -hmm. when you're talking about that type mm -hmm. of a roll off, man. Mm -hmm. Well, Teddy, we appreciate the time. We appreciate the conversation as always, man. And uh, we'll talk to you a week from today, man. Now, crude, let's finish it up. So we're sitting at, we got about 30 seconds, Teddy. Um, yeah. Crude at about 120. You talked about it last week saying, you know, playing this market mm -hmm. very difficult with the volatility when I ask you, maybe looking at some of the currencies. Could you talk about that again for a quick 30 seconds for the listeners sure. that didn't check it out, how you might be sure. able to trade crude? Go ahead. Absolutely. That goes with the U.S. dollar yen trade, the U.S. dollar Swiss trade for sure. As crude oil starts to rally, you're going to see, they're, they're good. There are those, that's giving strength to those two for sure. Be very careful with the U.S. dollar Canada. That's going to be very choppy as crude starts to rally. Awesome, man. And look at the chart of that yen, man. Yeah, quite a bounce in the last few days to 129.28, mm -hmm. uh, inching towards that 130 mark. Well, Teddy, man, we appreciate the time as always, the education, and we'll talk to you a week from today, man. Thanks, Tommy. See you next week. Okay, thanks.